Well, hello, and welcome to the How to Get More Vocal Power Workshop. My name is Natalie Eastman. I am the owner of A Higher Note LLC. I'm a private instruction provider, and I have taught for over 25 years. Uh, we'll get to a little bit more of that, but first, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am delighted that you are watching and uh, you'll when you see this you'll be watching this as a recorded replay and I am very happy that you're here let's launch shall we I am going to share my screen so let me get set up for that and we will get going on the content of our presentation which I know is what you are excited about here we are you are here for the Get More Vocal Power Workshop. We are here for not only you know, vocal power, but intensity, expression, and being able to sing profoundly without strain or pushing. So if that's you, you're in the right place. You are in the right place also if you can't get power in the first place. You simply can't seem to manufacture enough power to create any volume. Maybe it's in certain parts of your range, uh, maybe it's throughout your range, but you're in the right place. You are in the right place if you can sing loud, but it sounds bad. Uh, it may sound brassy or tinny or just uh, not good, and you don't like it and maybe others don't really like it either. Um, you're in the right place if you don't have any intensity in your singing, you don't feel you're communicating um, with enough breadth of intensity um, dynamically. Dynamics in music uh, the, uh, means volume. And so maybe you don't feel like you have a range of volume with which you can express intense emotion um, or um, whether that be quiet or loud. Maybe you can't get power or volume without pushing. You feel like you have to really push the air to get the kind of volume or intensity that you want and you find yourself straining. You strain to sing with any kind of volume, especially perhaps your higher notes, but some people might strain to sing lower notes, especially for women. They might sing, try to sing low notes and not be able to get that uh, very loud or intense. You're in the right place if your voice suffers after you sing, uh, after you sing with volume or power, that is. You're in the right place if you can't speak for days or a day or so. Anyways, after singing powerfully, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. So let's try to address some of those things. Let me do a little bit more of introducing myself. My name is Natalie Eastman. My hair is a lot longer now, as you can see from that picture. Um, I am the owner of a higher note LLC, as I mentioned earlier. I have been, uh, I have 35 years of experience performing vocally and teaching. So I taught for approximately, I, I performed professionally off and on for about 12 years and um, also semi-professionally, and I have semi-professionally and avocationally sung ever since then. And I have taught for um, at least 25 years. It's been a while. Private singing lessons and vocal coaching, and I also have taught um, guitar and piano, and I still do. And I am, uh, I teach for myself, and I also teach for a conservatory here where I live. And I do believe in the powerful benefits of music for the very young and the very gold. So uh, you're in the right place, whether you're young or old. My sweet spot in business and in life is to work with over 40 singers, quite honestly. Um, I am 53, to be quite out there. And so uh, pursuing a having a voice that is enjoyable to hear for others and enjoyable for me as well, for myself to hear, um, and that feels good and feels responsive and that will not fade over the decades that I hope I will be blessed with. Um, I have a lot 
of years in the female side of my family. So if, uh, Lord willing, I have as many years as many of the women in my family have had and several of the men, I'll be living a long time, I hope. So um, I want to keep my voice. And uh, so that is a lifelong goal. And I'm always on the lookout for people for whom that is also a lifelong goal. So um, these are ways you can reach me. I'm, my website is ahirenote.com. And you can also email me at info at ahirenote.com. I'm sure you've gotten a few emails from me this week regarding this workshop. I am a real person. So this is a little bit of CYA, not to be crass, but um, a disclaimer. Um, what I'm offering in the workshop today is not medical advice. You need to get medical help if you think you need it. If you think you have an underlying issue, um, call an ENT or your general practitioner to get uh, checked. It's possible you could have structural issues. Um, you could have nodules, um, polyps from um, health, uh, health um, problems or, or abuse, uh, vo vocal abuse. So um, this workshop assumes that you have a basically healthy voice. So we're going to proceed on that assumption. So let's see here. Get back to my notes. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about some myths in terms of some of the fundamentals of getting more power. Um, myth one is you need to send more air, just get more air to come out. The second myth is that you need to blow harder or push harder, um, or that you need to tense up. I literally have heard people say that you need to tense up in order to get more power. Those are actually counterproductive and will not help you and can actually harm you. So uh, let's get to some truths. Something that is true is that you need to root down to rise up. That's an expression I hear a lot in my yoga classes. Um, root down to rise up. That means to ground yourself in order to soar. Okay, And it is so true for singing your, um, we're going to get to this later, but your singing does not just happen up here, okay? It doesn't just happen here, that's for sure. It's here and it's even down here in your pelvic region. So um, it's a very rooted activity and um, yeah. So, and when you inhale for singing, you, uh, you actually need, instead of tensing up, you need to let this all go this needs to be completely relaxed and your breathing needs to be outward, this direction, the direction that your back can expand and sides, letting those intercostal muscles, the lats, um, and all the attending muscles um, be able to uh, spread out with the diaphragms lowering. Okay, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. So breathe out, not up. And then you support from the very bottom. More on that later, I've already hinted on that. And we wanna also use our natural primary and secondary resonators to enhance our vocal power. So what is vocal power? Is it just louder singing? Is it more intensely emotional singing? Can it be quiet, focused sound? Um, I believe yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> All the above. Um, and so more on how and why coming up here. Okay. So let's talk a bit about what is vocal resonance. The, the definition of vocal resonance is the amplifying, the making bigger of vocal sound. Uh, and vocal sound is also the fancy word for it is phonation. So, uh, but vocal resonance is the amplifying of that sound. Okay, so the sound originates here in the vocal fold area in the, inside the larynx, which is nicknamed the voice box because that's where it all comes from. Um, but the sound only originates here. It, um, it needs to be amplified. So if you will think of a guitar string, 
Okay, if I just held a guitar string out by itself and plucked it, it you would, if it was tight enough, you could hear a sound because you could see the vibration, you could hear a sound, but it wouldn't be very full, um, certainly wouldn't be very robust. So you take that same string though and you stretch it over a, uh, the body of a guitar inside of which those sound waves created by the vibration of the, of the string, those sound waves, those compressed pockets of air can bounce around and the sound gets fuller and richer until you come up with a really beautiful tone. So um, that is the basic uh, understanding of resonance, vocal resonance. So what causes resonation? Buckle up, this is a big one. <laughs> what causes resonation is our sympathetic vibrations that continually amplify those sound waves that I just talked about that were created by that initial compressed air, okay? And we're talking about from here now, not the guitar string, okay? The compressed air that's released from the vocal folds as they oscillate, okay? They don't just go like this, they oscillate. And it's kind of like they produce smoke signal-like pockets of compressed air. And those uh, pockets of compressed air are released um, at different frequencies and that creates pitch. So uh, the higher the frequency, the faster the folds are going, then the higher the pitch and the slower, then the lower the pitch. Um, so that is kind of a, a quick and dirty on what is vocal resonance. Okay, what causes vocal resonation? All right. Um, and then, of course, the question you might have is, can I get me some more of that? Uh, here's an answer. Yes and no. Okay, how helpful is that? Um, so the relationship between vocal power and resonance, uh, well, let, let me go back to that for a second. I don't want to just leave you hanging on that. So yes and no. Um, most people have a great amount of resonance. You, you think about kids on a playground. Think about a baby crying. No problem there with resonance, that's for sure. Um, so your body is created with a natural resonance capability. You naturally have a call register, the one where you would say, hey, hey, okay, um, the ability to call out in a louder voice than just typical conversational speaking. That's usually for short durations. You don't do it all the time. And uh, some of us uh, have a natural internal structure and um, sizing and shaping of the larynx that allows for greater resonance from the get-go, usually after puberty. But some children have exceptionally, um, <laughs> exceptionally resonant voices. I work with children, so I should know. And I have three myself. Uh, so, uh, some of you, if you have a super, super, super resonant voice, you might need help containing that intensity so that you can produce softer and yet still intense sounds. Um, all right, so anyone though can augment, anyone with a, with a healthy voice can augment their natural resonance by learning to focus that resonance, by learning to engage supportive muscle groups and by using your natural resonation maximally. Okay, let's move down. So vocal power is more than just louder singing. It's utilizing the natural processes of resonation. Um, resonate, resonance is either enhanced or reduced by the tension and compression of the vocal cords, vocal folds, the height of the larynx, where it is positionally in the, th in the neck, in the throat, um, the shape of the mouth and the pharynx, okay, resonator areas. Um, it is also impacted by appropriately engaging the pelvic floor, okay. I'll say more on that on, in a bit. I've hinted at it already but it's almost like flipping a switch to turn on a megaphone. It is uh, really interesting. And uh, 
there are there are physical reasons for it, cellular, uh, but it's weird. When you think about it, it's weird that your pelvic floor is actually supporting your vocal production. And not only that, but I mean, it supports it like, wow, supports it, okay? Big time. Um, right? So also, vocal power is uh, very greatly enhanced by applying good vocal technique. And that will help you make the most of your natural resonance. And also, employing emotional effects that enhance your singing and elevate it to a level of artistic expression so that it becomes something more than simply singing a song. You are using your voice and the resonance that you have and the resonance you create by using emotion um, to create that sense of power without having to blow your voice out, okay? And so I do want you to think about that, like immediately, start applying that immediately. How can you use emotion to, um, to, to create the sense of amplified sound or of amplified and intensified emotion? Okay, um, yes, okay. Just kind of getting off into coaching there for just a second. All right, so we've seen that resonation is the physical activity that goes on inside your body to create your unique voice, okay? It's anatomy and physiology in a beautiful, amazing, symbiotic relationship and symbiotic motion. It's those sound waves bouncing around inside your head and your neck and your chest to create your unique voice. It's also, it's why, it's why we can use vocal analyzers, okay? Your particular resonance, vocal resonance, is why we can use vocal analyzers and voice identifiers for security measures. What? Okay, it's because no one has the exact same voice you do because no one has the exact same internal structure as you, even twins. They don't. Mm. No one has the exact sizes, shapes, and consistencies of hard and soft tissues and spaces inside your body that you have in your body. So your voice is truly entirely unique. Um, that's why there'll never be another you, and that's why you need to contribute your voice to the world, which is also why it behooves you to develop it so we can all enjoy it, and you can enjoy it for life. So vocal power is much more than just louder singing. All right, so let's do, let's look at some considerations right up front that you need to think about as you are working on your vocal power. At a minimum, you need to have a daily vocal practice plan, okay? Do you already have a, a daily vocal practice plan in place? Um, you need one that has exercises and operates on principles that you've researched or that have been researched for you so that you know they're providing you with solid technique. Um, you need one that's flexible and that can grow with your voice. Do you have a daily vocal practice that you can easily remember? Because that's important, um, especially as you get older, but anytime. We're busy, busy, busy and uh, when something is hard to remember, it's hard to remember and it doesn't get done. Uh, let me fix this. Okay. Just like five seconds back. Okay. So you need to be able to remember it. Um, you, do you have a vocal plan that is modular enough to provide you with daily maintenance? to address specific targeted issues that you need to address, and also modular enough to provide you with long-term vocal growth. Uh, you might want to get on our mailing list at um, ahirenote.com, if you're not already, to make sure that you're notified when we do our next uh, five-day keep singing workshop. Um, I'm sorry, five-day Keep singing five-day challenge. Um, 
in that challenge, you design your own simple, effective daily vocal practice plan that fulfills all those requirements and that challenge is free. So I hope that you will look for that. It's, uh, it's the, the URL is keepsingingchallenge.com. We are not, we're doing one in a couple weeks, do them periodically, but um, not imminently. It's coming up though, so maybe get on that list. All right, vocal health overall. Okay, so um, other considerations. Uh, you need the daily vocal, oh, I already went through all that, good for me, okay. Um, and you need kind of overall vocal health to be taking care of your instruments. So some things for you to consider. Your eating habits, and this directly impacts your vocal power, my friends. Um, eating habits, do you eat highly acidic foods? Okay, not saying to cut them out, but be careful when you eat them and when you eat them in proximity to singing. Be careful when you eat them in proximity to sleeping, okay? Do you eat anything late at night before sleeping? General rule of thumb is don't eat two hours before bedtime. Reflux, 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 silent reflux, and that wreaks absolute havoc on your singing voice, period. If you've been losing vocal power that you once had, check yourself on those, these things I've just mentioned, okay? Hydration, are you staying hydrated? De -de -de. Okay, um, I'm gonna take a sip right now. They say that you should drink half of your body weight in fluid ounces. I probably don't drink that much because I often use hydration multipliers, which are kind of Gatorade-esque kind of things. Um, so, but stay hydrated. Now, here we go. Uh, not a moral issue, but a smart issue, I guess. Okay, so the vices, so to speak. A physical issue. Smoking, drinking alcohol, drinking sodas full of sugar and carbonation. Um, you need, for any of those things, you need to drastically reduce them or ideally eliminate them altogether. You will be selling yourself and your voice short if you do not. Uh, question, uh, I mentioned earlier about your vocal fold health. I'm assuming that you have basically healthy voice. Um, but here are some things to think about. Do you use your voice excessively on the job? Do you, in your own style of speech or singing, do you force your voice? Um, do you have polyps or nodules? Um, yeah, work use of your voice. Do you yell a lot naturally? Now, you might be laughing at that because some people really do. They just yell like all the time. They don't have a quiet <laughs> volume to their speaking. But um, here's a phenomenon that has become really a big deal this year among my National Association of Teachers of Singing colleagues, which is the use of online um, vocal uh, instruction and music instruction in general with that online, uh, I love teaching online, but I have to be very careful because I can begin to talk really loud because um, I think I'm not being heard or because maybe I am trying to get their attention or whatever it is, but I kind of naturally uh, start, find myself not quite yelling, but definitely um, being on. And since I teach for hours at a time sometimes, um, that can be very wearing. So I have to be very careful and you should too. It's like the world is online right now doing Zoom meetings and FaceTimes and stuff. So be careful with that. Um, so abusing or ineffectively using or unhealthfully using your voice regularly can rob you of your vocal power. Okay, so let's talk about vocal registers. Um, what are, what's a vocal register? 
Okay. So this is a much discussed topic among researchers and pedagogues. A lot of times the pedagogues are researchers and vice versa. What is a vocal register? Um, for our purposes and for my general purposes, I define them and they are generally defined as, not just it's not me saying this, but they're generally defined as section, sections of your vocal range in which your larynx is positioned in a certain way, the air waves produced through the laryngeal movement are, um, they're, they're, they're moving in a certain way, and the sound resonates in a certain way in your body. And these elements together work together to produce a certain type of sound quality in your voice that people describe in different ways because they have those groupable sound qualities. Um, here's one. First one would be vocal fry. That's uh, down there. So you can make that. You're phonating. And um, that's actually... Uh, I don't remember the guy's name, but there's a guy who actually sings like pretty much all the time in his vocal fry. Um, there's, uh, yeah, so the, it's also a tool that many singers use to get um, breathiness out of their voice and to make sure you have a clear tone. Vocal fry, okay? Second is your modal register, which is just another word for normal. Because you're normal, it's your speaking register. It's kind of a the pitch range where you generally speak. Okay, now the next terms are debated, okay, but they're debated in waves that people act like they know exactly what they're talking about. So, um, but the term, the first term is falsetto, so falsetto and head voice. Head voice, so for falsetto, you can categorically apply that to men. Um, generally women don't have falsetto. Women are continue are considered to have head voice. Now that said, I have taught plenty of men and have plenty of men who have head voice. But some people, no matter what, they call a man's head voice falsetto. In fact, some people call all upper ranges of people falsetto. So I tend to call it head voice, um, or I just call it upper range because there is a laryngeal shift that happens and that is what unlocks a person's upper range for them. So at any rate, you have falsetto and you have head voice, okay? Then you have whistle register. So for whistle register, you can think of Mariah Carey, just being all way up there, okay? I can't do that, but way up there. And then an Ariana Grande does that too. Um, this is not, um, yeah, not uh, just men's general falsetto. That is very nice, but it's not whistle. Whistle is the super high. Men can do this, and men and women. Okay, um, and apparently, I mean, you you can learn to do it. I've never been able to do it. Honest confession. Okay, um, that's okay. Um, it is what it is. I got a really big range. I'm not worried about whistle register. And neither should you. Like you can work toward it, but um, if you if you don't get it, don't worry about it. Okay, don't worry about it. Keep singing. Um, now there are others as well. Oh, I'm kind of behind on my slides. Here we go. There's that. There are there are those four, and then there are two more. Okay, the call register that I already talked about. Hey you. Okay. Hey you. Hey you. Where it's very frontal up in the mask, um, and your pitch generally is a bit raised. And then there is the mix, and there's um, that basically means um, a very pharyngeal sound, so that, and that means that you are really activating your pharynx, and your pharynx is a secondary resonator that is the soft palate in the back of your throat. So that's a uh, a movable piece that can be expanded and really employed for bridging between your lower portion of your range and your upper portion of your range to keep them very connected and to give you that bright pingy sound as you are singing through, especially the mid-wide section of your range. 
Um, but that's what people refer to as the mix in case you've ever wondered. So what do some you know, of the uh, experts say about vocal power? Now, Estelle Liebling is the classic, classical bel canto method book. I've been around for decades and one of the best books out there. I mean, it's still got accurate, timeless information in there. I take I took a phonation class, anatomy and physiology of phonation, and her stuff is still right on. I think she was writing in the 50s. Okay, um, so, so her thing is keep your resonators open. So when she says that, she means your mouth, your um, your pharynx, and your throat. So you want so let and in fact let's talk for just a second about. The resonators because I failed to mention this specifically. So um, your primary resonators are your pharynx, which is a soft muscular throat passage or um, or the soft palate. Okay. Then there is your trachea and your bronchia. Okay. Then your secondary resonators are your mouth, your nose, and your sinus chambers. All right. Some people might Cat, categorize them differently in terms of primary and secondary, but those are the, from what I understand, my research, um, those are the kind of the scientific ways that they are viewed. Okay, so Estelle Labeling says keep your resonators open. Ken Tamplin says ping is king. His, his thing is it's all in the la ah, the la ah, okay. Brett Manning says the money's in the mix. That again is the pharyngeal space. And that's, I mean, I, I feel like I can hear him saying that. I've been in his program for several years. He's excellent. Um, I've been through Ken Tamplin's program. By the way, okay, so I've not been through Sophie Shears' program. Um, I have been through Jeannie Diva's program. I have uh, self-studied through Seth Riggs' program. Um, and they're, they're great. Okay. And I, I have gone through Estelle Liebling's, uh, that was my first ever uh, method book for Bel Canto. Um, but I've taken from other pedagogues uh, in person. I did take from Jeannie Diva, the late Jeannie Diva, before um, she died. This was a couple decades ago that I took lessons from her. So um, these are actual people <laughs> and from whom I have actually studied or studied their stuff and was kind of like the, if, um, uh, if you're familiar with the Bible, the Bereans who didn't just take what they were taught, but they compared it with what they knew to be true. So um, I am always seeking to know more and I'm always comparing what I learn f um, with what I have learned in the past and what I have found uh, to be scientific, etc. Okay, now let's keep going. So. All, they would all say, oh, I didn't, I didn't finish this. Okay, so the money's in the mix. Um, your Sophie Shears says uh, it's in your whiny or your cry voice, eh, eh, which is basically very similar to ping is king um, and the mix voice. It's very pharyngeal, ah, eh, ah, eh, not nasal, not, not, eh, not that, ah, 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 just think if you think, I'm gonna cry now. Ah, ah. That's that's uh, the pharynx kind of doing its thing. And then Jeannie Diva has a whole series on waking up your resonators. Um, Seth Riggs discusses and teaches the transfer of resonance. So feeling and allowing the resonance to transfer from your lower um, resonation to your upper resonation. So that's um, those are all really important and all very helpful, and I hope they're helpful to you. All of them, all of those pedagogues would say, as I said earlier today, applying good vocal technique will help you make the most of your natural resonance and give your voice its best carrying power. Okay, let's move on to our seven. Oops, it's going to turn out to be seven, so let me change that. Maybe it won't let me change it. That's okay. Seven tips, um, super effective targeted ex exercises for more vocal power. So what I suggest you do, and I'm not gonna do it during this workshop, 
although I, I could, but it's, it's already going long. Um, but record yourself singing a simple song that you know well before you start doing these exercises. Um, ideally, you would choose a song in which you struggle to get or maintain power where you want it. Then do the exercises, then record yourself again singing the same song after doing the exercise series and, and then see how it feels and how it sounds, rather, how it sounds. Uh, but it also will feel different. So, okay. Before you start the exercises, begin first with lip trills and tongue trills and, and tongue trills and hums and various other things to relax your muscles. So by lip trill, I mean this. And you can do a very simple way to do it is to go up and down like a fire engine. Another thing is to do tongue trill. If you want, you can turn on a song, a CD or your iPod or whatever, <laughs> your iPhone, your music, I'm dating myself, um, and uh, do lip trills and tongue trills and hums along with them for a while, for about three, four, five minutes. That relaxes everything here. They're excellent things. Now, I'm going to assume, again, that because this is about vocal power, that you're already singing regularly and that you practice regularly to some extent. So please don't just out of the blue start doing the power exercises, okay? Now, so then we're going to do the vocal fry to connect the vocal folds, okay? To bring that clear tone. If you are having any kind of, if part of your power struggle, power struggle is breathiness. Because yes, you cannot get very good vocal power at all if you are releasing a ton of extra breath that is very inefficient singing. And so you want to bring your, that means your vocal folds are not meeting, okay? That's where the extra breath. It's okay to do that on purpose for artistic effect here and there, or maybe throughout a whole song, but to have that be your whole voice, let's work on it. <laughs> so, but vocal fry is that, uh, now something you can do is go kind of up as far as you can with your vocal fry. Uh, But you can just connect ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and then begin to sing the phrase again, whatever it is. Okay, so that helps us get clear tone for more power and intensity. Now let's get rid of some tension, okay? Before we start the exercises, we're going to take your thumb, okay? Um, some instructors and coaches have you use two, some use one, uh, but we're going to use two, and you're going to just, you can just do some of those hums or ah. Let's just do an ah and uh, do that fire engine shape again. We're keeping things real simple today, but you can apply this to many different things, okay? Ah. Okay, so then another thing that we want to do to bust tension is not ever to let our chin drift up like this. You will see many singers singing like this. It is very counterproductive. What is better is actually to lower your chin, not tucking it. We're not doing this, but we're just lowering it like an inch. So let's say this is my normal speech conversational level. I would just tuck it just a hair. So you can see me here. It doesn't look abnormal, but um, another thing I have my students do and I do 
is to just put your fingertip on your chin. And that'll help you keep from doing that. Because once you start doing that, all these muscles around the larynx engage and start trying to hold your head in place rather than getting out of the way of the laryngeal function. So you want to let the larynx do its job, and that is especially true when it comes to getting more vocal power. Another thing you can do is to bend over from the waist. Anytime you're going higher, remember I said root down to rise up, another thing you can do is bend over to rise up, quite honestly. Um, not curving, we're not doing this to curve all this like this. You're leading with your chest bone leading and so your your bending would come from your uh, the crease right there your hip crease and you would bend like that okay lead with your your um, sternum all right so and then you can kind of hang upside down and um, try some of the exercises that way um, and you can do the lip trills and tongue trills and hums and buzzes and um, ahs and oohs and go through various vowels. Okay, so you're just you're getting yourself warmed up and getting um, some of the tension, getting rid of it. Okay, so here we go. Now it's usually where the transition. It's usually the transitions where people lose their power. So we want to. One of the things we want to do is to keep the pharynx resonating to bridge between the higher and the lower portions of your range. Um, uh, some, that's, some people will describe this in different ways, um, but that's kind of what is happening. And, um, uh, but you want the tone to stay connected. So you want to keep a consistent tone between your lower range and then bridging through to your upper range and into your upper range. So you want it to sound similar and keeping the pharynx resonating is one very helpful way to do that, especially when you're trying to get that power. Okay, so here we go. Let's do some exercises to help you get into that, um, this, get into this zone of more, t more power so that you can record that song again and uh, feel the, feel the, the difference and hear the difference. Hear the difference, okay? We're looking for results here. And by the way, I'd like to hear your results. So you saw my email address up there at the beginning of the presentation. I would absolutely adore hearing from you to know what kind of results you experienced as a result of this workshop. Um, I love encouragement, but I do well with constructive criticism as well. I want your feedback, please. Um, now, so yawn sigh. Woo! Let's let's open it up. Let's stretch it out. Let's wake it up. Okay, that's basically the pharynx. So this is very ugly. I mean, it is ugly face. Okay, yawning is never attractive. Nobody, even the most beautiful supermodel, is attractive when they <laughs> yawn. So, uh, but this is a, a super effective exercise. So. Here it is. I'm going to try to manufacture a yawn, uh, a natural, I'm trying to prompt a natural yawn, and if I can't, then I'll manufacture one. I'm going to yawn, and I'm going to get an ah, and I'm going to ride that ah down and keep that ah connected all the way down to the bottom of my range, as far as I can get it, trying to get all the way down to touch the vocal fry. All right, here we go. Okay, now you'll notice that, uh, you notice it wasn't that hard for me to manufacture a yawn, um, but I about half, not even about a quarter of the way through, I just put my fingers here to remind myself to keep my jaw dropped. And uh, the reason for that is because the jaw tends to ride back up as you're going down. So you want to keep it low so that you maintain that openness and that stretch 
And so you'll want to do the yawn sigh three or four times, or as many times as you, you want, okay? Don't do it like crazily, um, but you know, several times. Um, a, a resonator, uh, I'm sorry, an exercise that um, comes from Jeannie Diva's uh, Contemporary Vocalist Method, um, which is excellent, especially if, especially if you are looking for contemporary singing. Um, but she has what's called the resonator wake up. Again, another ugly exercise <laughs> and annoying, but very effective for getting everything going. Um, there are, I believe, now she doesn't go into this, but there are reasons, I believe, scientifically, anatomically, that this is so effective. But I'm just telling you, even though it's going to look weird and sound weird, do it anyway, and you're going to experience amazing results. Okay, so here it is. You're going to stick your tongue out. I'm sticking it out past my bottom lip. And I am going to, on, on like uh, the NG of sing, mm, 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 I'm going to go back and forth between uh, NG and ah. I am not going to move my jaw. It's going to stay still, but not stiff. And I'm going to keep it you know, relaxed and open and my tongue out. Uh, my lips are not going to participate in this. You want the work to be done with the middle and back of the tongue. You want to feel those muscles moving and changing the, um, the E and the A ah bow. Here we go. Mm -hmm. your way through the vowels basically a a e o and u uh, then we have knee smile okay so and you can use a pattern i've used a numeric pattern here one three five eight 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 five three one the one being do uh prime uh, do do base do or middle c or whatever you however wherever you start your do at and eight being do prime so eight times higher so it would be uh, with a with a with a light and light and breezy smile, your teeth together, not girding your teeth, but holding the teeth together, and you're going to do gonna feel weird a lot of the time or some of the time and but just keep kind of working your way through your range you notice I moved up a half step each time you can sit at a piano and find a start place and just w walk up from one key to the next key to the next key you can use an online piano keyboard if you don't have a piano at home you can use a pitch pipe you can use a guitar you anything any instrument you have facility with probably wouldn't recommend doing it with a, a, a wind instrument because that'd be kind of a lot because you're both wind instruments, voice and you wind. But whatever you got, okay, whatever you have, use it. All right, so now let's talk about that pelvic floor engagement, okay, because this is strange and awesome at the same time. Um, I've lost some of my natural light here in the room. So... Um, we are talking about the muscles here, okay? Down here, you have um, basically your pelvic floor muscles and you're going to engage them. You use them to support. You do, we have our diaphragm muscles and I, I want you to learn basic breathing and I do teach um, a breathing method, actually happens to be Jeannie Diva's breathing method, um, but, I, but people have different methodologies and um, thoughts about uh, using diaphragm, you know, whether you should bother with the diaphragm, so to speak. I do believe you should. However, however, friends, um, 
learning to engage your pelvic floor is because today we're going for get more vocal power and this is a switch you can flip no joke so and by engaging it i mean that there's like a tucking okay under of your of your lower belly this below your your um i mean uh there are your potty muscles kristen chenoweth refers to it as singing from your hoo-ha <laughs> so, um, but it is tucking these muscles and supporting from down here in a motion like this okay so um down by your bladder and stuff so be sure to get that all taken care of before you start doing all this but um anytime you need a little boost of extra power try that out um uh there there there's more I could go into with that, the, the cellular structure connection between the larynx and the pelvic floor. It's crazy, um, but it's extraordinarily cool. But just for now, we're going for, the, um, for what you can know and what you can do. So, um, okay, pelvic floor. Then there's meow. This is from Sophie Shears. I like this one so much. Um, so what you're going to do is uh, we're going to, this is a, another pharyngeal space, stretching and openness exercise. Meow, me, or you can, sorry, me, keeping it relaxed. Another thing that she teaches that you can do is to do a little just meows. Meow, 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 Feel that space um, opening up in the back and your mouth. And there's ming, 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 ming. And you can use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, or any pattern that you like and that you know that's very familiar to you. Ning, 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 ning,
cut this part off and um, tell you about the offer I told you I was going to make. Um, I am transparent. <laughs> uh, so you'll, uh, you can also use the target, target practice method, um, which, so, it, and if you are unfamiliar with those, I talk about those in the Keep Singing 5-Day Vocal Challenge, which um, I mentioned earlier today, keepsingingchallenge.com. We will have another one coming up um, in a couple weeks. And again, it is free for you and, uh, and anyone else. <laughs> Free for everyone. So um, you're special though. So um, start using the strategic exercises as part of your daily vocal practice for 10 to 15 minutes a day. Oh, 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 oh. Don't forget to go back and record your song again and listen to it. And also see what the experience of singing that song is like for you after having done the exercises for a while. So, but doing these exercises for 10 to 15 minutes at the beginning um, and do them like three days a week. This is going to help bring permanent change. So you cannot, yes, they're kind of hacky. Yes, you can employ them um, when you're like kind of stuck and your voice is kind of stuck and you can pull these out of your pocket. But if you will use these regularly as part of a healthy daily vocal practice, then you will have, you will be, um, improving your vocal resonance and power and you will learn your body will learn its muscle memory for utilizing it um, appropriately and healthfully so then a goal would be to be able to do these for 30 to 45 minutes a day if you are a serious singer and um, you would want to be doing these for five to seven days a week and this would really depend upon your goals and um, your level of singing, um, you wouldn't want to just throw these in there on a, on a beginner. Beginners would want to start with the shorter time period for three times a week. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Now, um, here's the truth though, right? There is no magic button. I wish that we could operate like they did in the movie The Matrix, where Anytime they needed to learn something like a new language or needed to learn jujitsu or something, all of a sudden they took those cartridges and jammed them up in the back of their head and suddenly -a 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 -a, they downloaded the information. There isn't one, okay? There's, there aren't enough hacks in the world to replace frequent and regular vocal practice. And you need to seek out and put together um, a strategic results-based practice. That is why okay, I'm happy to invite you into my group lessons and coaching program. Here it is. Keep singing. Okay. So the Keep Singing online group singing lessons and vocal coaching program. Um, this is it. My hope for you is that you will get your best voice from this and you will create a plan to get your best voice that will last you for a lifetime. As I shared with you, that's my goal, and I'm here to help anyone who has the same vision do the same thing. Let's talk about what the program includes. Um, there are, and this is very unusual in um, the industry of like online coaching, but to have four, I run four live group trainings and coaching sessions every month. That is the that's the plan, Tuesday mornings. And um, they're always recorded and they're always put into our boom. Oh, let's talk about the value of that before I get onto that. So the value of that would be for my time and my preparation and the expertise, but there's a t I put a ton of prep into um, the presentations and the trainings. So um, I, I value that at $3,600 a year because it's always new stuff. Um, the second is that all those recordings that I mentioned a second ago um, go into our private online group coaching platform. Now this is not a Facebook group, although we have a Facebook group, um, but this is not that. This is a, um, a group coaching platform um, which we can use to communicate with each other, access modules, um, 
access the trainings, be notified of trainings, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, uh, log practices, um, do journaling, all, all kinds of stuff. It's a wonderful um, coaching platform. The value of that per person is $300 a year to have that um, accessible to them. Um, instructional training modules that I release monthly, and these would have different formats, and they would cover different topics. Um, they would have, some of them have video and audio, or they might have video and PDF, or some combination of different things um, that will cover specific topics. That could be a product in and of itself, um, and I would value that at $9.97 a year. Um, there are more. There are more things, okay? There are tools to help you organize your practice, PDFs with calendars, checklists, and transcripts, and lots of stuff. So um, all things to help you uh, advance and progress vocally um, and to keep your voice, get your voice to its optimum and keep it there. Uh, and I would value that at $4.97 a year. Then there are vocal checklists for many purposes. Oh, sorry, vocal exercises for many purposes. Um, some are created by me. Many of them are created by me. And some are curated from um, my four decades of study with other pedagogues and experts, both from individual private lessons for years and years and years, or these uh, programs and methods that I have studied that I've mentioned earlier. You can see that. I don't even know how to price it. How do you, how do you value four decades of your life <laughs> of study? So I arbitrarily determined that it would be $5,000 a year. Uh, it's not something I can even put a number on there, but for the sake of our purposes here, uh, we'll call it 5000 a year. Then there are weekly training emails that I send out to encourage, inspire, and challenge you. Um, the idea is to keep you moving along in your vocal progress. Um, and I value those at 497 a year. Those, um, some of them are quick and quippy, and uh, some of them are lengthy and full of st stuff, content. Um, Performance feedback opportunities within the Keep Singing community. Uh, we will have the, we do have the um, Facebook group page for our members only Facebook group page. And um, in that setting, you can upload videos of yourself, videos or audios, um, SoundCloud, whatever, of yourself singing. And those um, other members can comment on them and um, encourage you and you can also look for collaborative partners there and etc so the community um, I'm really trying to build that into something where you guys we all um, support each other and work together on things uh, so I value that community um, building that maintaining it and fostering it at 497 a year then um, and there we go. We're, we're growing an encouraging community of like-minded people who want to sing and sing well for a lifetime. Priceless. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, so there we go. Now, you'll see at the bottom that um, there are also, there's an option of um, laser coaching sessions. Let me go ahead and touch on that briefly. This, would n this is not included in the package. The, uh, these are separate and um, extra, and uh, but this might be something that you would want. Um, so there, uh, a laser coaching session is a 15 minute blocked out time where my eyes are and ears are on you totally. Um, they are conducted by Zoom or whatever is my best program I'm using at the time. And my focus is exclusively on you and whatever vocal issue or question that you bring to the table that day. Usually it's best to tackle one thing, but if you have a couple of small things, we can tackle those too. Um, but those are $40 for 15 minutes, and I do have more to say about those in uh, a little bit. We'll get to that in a minute. But those are optional, okay? So um, let's talk about, again, 
uh, I'm not going to talk about it. We just went through everything the program includes. So if you add up all those yellow numbers, it is valued easily at $11,388 a year. Okay, but let's be real. I'm not going to charge that. But that is a value. Um, there are coaches that do charge that. Um, that's not me. Uh, it's not my thing. Maybe not yet. Maybe someday. But I don't see... Yeah, that's... But last 15 seconds or so when I start talking about the value. Okay. Easily the value is $11,388 a year. Pretty easily. Um, so the normal cost though that um, of the program is $1,997 per year or uh, 12 payments of $197 a month. Your choice. There's no pressure to do one way or another. Um, the, you can see that the, the pay upfront or pay all at once price um, gets you a, a, a savings um, of several hundred dollars. But um, that is the normal cost. Okay, but do do do. Oh no, not today. Okay, not today. Not for workshop attendees. For workshop attendees only, um, there's about a 45 or so percent savings. <laughs> there's my daughter. Um, 12, uh, 1287 a year, um, not 1297, 1287, $1,287 a year or um, 12 payments of 127 a month. So that is for workshop attendees. And so just for being here, you have that available to you. So here it is all together. You can see everything the program includes. You can screenshot this, okay? Um, and you can see the special deal for workshop attendees only at the bottom. But wait, there's more. If you decide that this is for you and you know it already in your gut, you want to keep singing, you would like to work with me, this is a program that you think would fit you and really encourage you and would help you get your best voice, um, then I want to reward any fast action takers with four laser coaching sessions with me. So again, each laser coaching session is 15 minutes. So normally the price, as you know, is $40 for each one and uh, for each 15 minute session. And you can use them anytime throughout your 12 month membership. We would keep record of that. And, um, but you must sign up. Here's the condition. You must sign up for Keep Singing within 20, 20, 20 minutes, within 24 hours of watching the workshop, okay? That value is $160, so that's on top of everything else. Um, if you, if you, um, I'm gonna take your word for it that you watched the workshop and that you're joining within 24 hours, um, but that is, that's honor system and, um, but I will honor it. If you will honor me with your honesty, I will honor that bonus for you. So here it all is, do, do, do. There is my program. I told you I'd have an offer and there it is. And your question at this point might be, okay, well, Natalie, how do I join? How do I read more about this? What do I need to do? Here's the answer. Um, there's all the information. You can screenshot it now because it's got everything on there, um, all the details. And you would just need to go to keep-singing.com, keep hyphen singing.com. So I very much hope, let me stop sharing. I very much hope that you will consider joining. And I do really hope that today's workshop has been beneficial for you. Please do, I wasn't kidding when I said I would love to have your feedback. Um, please don't hesitate to email me at info at a higher note .com. And, um, please do check out keep-singing.com. Hope to hear from you soon. I hope to see you on the inside.